Welcome, friends. Jim Nance here, along with Phil Sims. And unfortunately for the wide receivers tonight, it's Tebow time. Oh, yes, it is. People in the front row may be getting their money's worth as they could catch a couple souvenirs today. It is Tebow time in New Jersey. And as a tribute, my opponent throws up a prayer on the first play of the game and ends up taking it all the way to the house. Not exactly how anyone draws up the first play of the game, but then this cheese dick has the audacity to onside kick me, and he ends up getting the ball back. Gah. So he starts pounding the ball with Marshawn Lynch. That guy's just an animal. He'll break so many tackles during a single game. Lynch ends up grabbing this pass in the flats, takes it down to the 17-yard line, and he's set up perfectly first and 10. He's starting to scramble Russell Wilson. We're able to strip him right here, but unfortunately... He's able to recover that ball, and then he finds Anthony McCoy on the left side of him, and he's able to take that into the end zone. But here comes the man of the hour, and he might need to send word up to the big guy to help us out, because we're down to a 14-0 hole early in this game. But that's all right, because Joe McKnight's getting those tough yards up the middle. We're trying to work this read option game with Tebow and the, and the quickness of Joe McKnight. Here we're forced to a third and 11, and Santonio Holmes butterfingers that ball. We take our three points, but uh, miracles seem to be happening for the wrong team as Sidney Rice just goes up and steals that one from our defense. And then he dots me up into the end zone right there to extend his lead to 21 to three. Getting the ball back with such a big deficit, scoring is paramount, it's key. We have to come away with something here. We can't come away with an empty possession. And right here, Tebow finds Joe McKnight on the screen, and he is gone. Six points, put them on the board, let's go. But uh, putting up points is only half the battles. We gotta come out and make a defensive stand. And on second and 10, that's exactly what we do is we get a user pick. Give me that Mario coin. LeRon Landry, AKA Iron Man, grabs that ball and ends up dancing around his offense for a while before coming down with that turnover. Third and nine, looking downfield, but Tebow, oh, Tebow. My son. Freshly shaven Jesus? No, Jesus is visiting Nasher. This is Moonlight Swami. Oh. Tim, do not be discouraged. <laughs> Hallelujah, my opponent decides to headbutt the ball. Release the holy hand grenade. Will do. First down, Tebow looking to capitalize, looking around, trying to find the open man. Jerry McCurley's making the inside cut right now, and Tebow finds him for the touchdown. With the divine power of Moonlight Swami, we are making a comeback in this one, folks. The tide has turned, the winds have changed, and we're stealing more Mario coins from this man. LaRon Landry's second pick of the day gets us the ball back down by four points. That drop pass ends the half, but this guy's been onside kicking the whole game, and he ends up getting this one right here. Seriously, bro? So this is the second one he's got in this game if you've been keeping track but we force him to do a fourth and long and he ends up dropping the ball anyway so we get a turnover on downs tebow time we call for the makeshift screen and whoop give me a little chris berman whoop joe mcknight just showing off that high elusiveness and we end up getting to a third and three but tebow can't find his man on the rollout we take our field goal which concludes the 17-0 run we just made and now we're looking for our defense to keep on doing what they were doing. Only Sidney Rice catches Darrell Revis sleeping, and he ends up taking this one. Man, that's frustrating. I don't, Sidney Rice is so slow in this game. How the hell did he burn by Darrell Revis? Eight points is the spread midway through the third quarter. Tebow's throwing crazy passes and almost getting picked off. Out of field goal range, we need the conversion, but don't get it. Gotta go for it. Tim Tebow must have struck fear into that man's heart because he went all out bag defense on me and I could not playmaker anyone open. But right here, he just chucks it up and ends up coming down with one. He gets control back and faced with a third and long. He airs it out, but Revis is there. That sets him up with a manageable field goal. Only the winds are blowing. Miss field goal equals turnover on downs, and we get the ball back down by eight, trying to make something happen here. Joe McKnight gets the corner and ends up picking up a decent gain. Tebow dropping back on third and five, trying to find anybody open. Joe McKnight drops the pass that would have put us right into prime territory. That drop ends up costing us as I can't get all of that ball, and I end up missing a field goal on my own. Going into the fourth quarter, defense has Russell Wilson wheeling as we end up getting a huge sack. Third and forever, Russell airs it out, and LaRon Landry, Iron Man, comes down with the pick for the hat trick. 
He is grabbing Mario Coins hand over fist. And let's take another crack at getting this eight point deficit erased as we hit Joe McKnight up the middle and he gets a big first down for us. We feed the hot hand Joe McKnight and he's gonna take it down the sidelines. I mean, this is a Tebow team, mm -hmm. a team ordained by a higher power, Preach. a team of destiny. Mm -hmm. destiny, destiny, destiny. We miss on the two point conversion. He starts clocking me, but accidentally runs out of bounds. And then on fourth and nine, he goes for it and misses. So we get the pull back on the 43 yard line with about a minute and 30 left. With that last completion, we're in field goal range. And all we have to do is run this clock. So that's what we're doing. Read option with Tebow, trying to get down there. One more read option, and we're going to run to the line real quickly and spike this ball. Field goal kick for the win, right down the middle. And now all we have to do is defend that deep pass. It's up in the air, long, and swatted for the win. There's no argument that Michael Jordan isn't the greatest basketball player on the face of the planet ever to play the game. He was a notch above his competition. He had the titles. He had the MVPs. He had the scoring championships. He had everything and was that much better than Stockton, Kemp, Peyton, Malone, everyone you can list. But the years he was out, the years he retired, the New York Knicks showed promise as they made it to Game 7 of the Finals, but then lost with a disappointing fourth quarter. But what if they had one more scoring option? What if they had Carmelo Anthony, the greatest scorer today in the game of basketball by far? Carmelo Anthony is the best offensive player in the game today. He's got everything. He's got the mid-range. He's got the three ball. He's got the post game. And of course, he can finish at the rim. So today, we're going to see if he would have made that much of a difference in that finals. How would he have fared with this team and how would they play with him? And early on, you'll see he has Carmelo Anthony as well. He's crossing me over. But Patrick Ewing, no. Get that out of here. That is the greatest block I've seen in 2K from behind the back. Oh my god, that is just scary good. And later on, Charles Smith, we're still in the first, gets a nice deflection. Carmelo Anthony's going the other way, and he's shaking and baking. Look at that. He's looking like Jamal Crawford out there with the shake and bake move as he puts the drill behind his back and hops right through the defender and making Akeem Olajuwon look silly on that play. But on the very next play... Hakeem goes back into the post, and he's shaking, and he's baking on the other end with that spin move. Oh, my. Hakeem Olajuwon with that up and under spin move is very hard to defend. But on the other end, Carmelo Anthony's going to pop for three. And now we're only down two as we go into the second quarter. Then later in the second quarter, Patrick Ewing gets it inside, gets that nice up and under finish as well. Whatever you can do, I can do better. Showing them a little bit of that. And speaking of whatever you can do, look at what John Starks can do on the alley-oop. You know he can get up. If you haven't seen that play where he goes up against the Bulls and he just absolutely throws down on them, clearly you need to do your homework and see that because that's one of the greatest dunks in playoff history when he literally just posterizes Michael Jordan and Horace Grant at the same time along with a few other Bulls. But as you see, we're going into halftime. We're not really shooting well. 3 of 10 from the floor, only 50%. And we're missing jumpers like this. It's just not, not nothing's falling for us, it seems like. And you'll see right on the other end, he's going to get it over to Melo. And Melo ain't going to miss that wide open jumper. He's going to knock it down every single time. So clearly, we both need to step up our defensive pressure. We have to be running out to the shooters. And we cannot be leaving him wide open as we go down the floor. Which he does to Melo right there again. I mean, it just seems like it's a scoring fest. One end, we're scoring. The next end, he's scoring. It's just constant three-pointers and buckets and not Charles Smith shooting. Charles Smith didn't score a point in this game. And, I mean, that's kind of deservingly so. He's not really a scorer. He's more of a defensive guy. As you'll see right there, he did miss that jumper. And as we're going the other way, he just alley-ooped to me. So, you know what? What you could do, I can do better. Let's get that alley-oop with Patrick Ewan, who was trailing. But, on the other end, we do the same thing. We throw it away. And, yeah. He's going to feed Melo. Oh, my goodness. Look at the flare on this alley-oop right here. This is how you feed him. Sean Starks, let's let's take some notes because you got to be hitting Melo in stride every single time. We can't be throwing passes away, especially not in the second half where every bucket counts, including this facial on Patrick Ewing. But we get one last shot with nine seconds left, and it rattles in with Sean Stark, the fadeaway three. So we're, we're not down too many going into the fourth, but we're still struggling to score late in the fourth. We managed to get this nice turnaround jumper 
from Patrick Ewan who had the mismatch on him. Still though, only four points in the quarter so far when we managed to find John Starks for the deep three with the hand in his face. Kevin Durant was not happy he made that shot right there. And on the other end, he lets LeBron take over and go to the rim with that nice throw down. We're now down six with one minute left. It's still a comeback. It's still possible. We hit this inside jumper right there, but that should have been a three if I was just one more half step behind the line. But anyways, we get the ball up to Charles Smith, who turns it over to Melo, and Melo throws up a full court shot. What is he doing? Look at the clock. There's still 35 seconds left. He could have held it there. He could have drained it and probably ended the game. But instead, we get it on the other end, and we go right back to the rim, and we manage to finish it. Now all we need is one stop, one defensive possession, and we do get it, but we do not get the rebound. And Akeem Olajuwon finishes on the other end. So now down four. They need a quick score. And they need to get some fouls. They need someone to miss free throws. And they find Melo. Yes! Wide open three-pointer. Top of the key. Barely any time off the clock. Now all we got to do is foul. Maybe get a steal. And we are in this game still. Let's try and get the steal. Oh, no. We miss. LeBron. He's not. He's, oh, my goodness. He could have had a wide open dunk. Instead, he tried to waste the clock. Now to the free throw line. And he misses the first one. MVP chance in the crowd. And he misses the first free throw. The second free throw is also no good. What a choke. Reggie Miller. Oh my goodness. Please tell this dude what he's doing. So with six seconds left, we get a shot to win the game. John Starks, we got an open look at the buzzer. We got it. Look at that fadeaway shot from John Starks. Now we're up one point. You know Spike Lee's digging that shot right there. But now we got to play defense. Last possession of the ball game. And we're trying not to let him get it to Steph Curry. Don't let him tell Curry me. And we stop him right there. Game over. The Knicks win. What a comeback and what a shot by John Starks.